Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm out here at the range today with my friend Matt Hot, um, who has what appears to be a really abnormally small shotgun. Like, I'm not used to seeing you with not a shotgun. I know, right? But that's definitely not a shotgun. I gotta keep people on their toes. <laughs> so, what we're looking at today is sort of this conceptual pistol use that, as far as I can tell, was pioneered by our friend Rhett Newmeyer. Mm -hmm. And it's what he calls a cheek pistol. And so Rhett had spent some time working on very, like, very short firearms for use in very close quarters. Yes. And the first thing that I saw him doing that was really unorthodox, I think, was actually using one of those bird's head grip pistol <coughs> pump action shotguns in a capable and, like, actually legit professional looking man. So he came to a class of ours back in March, and he brought a uh, bird's head grip only Beretta 1301, along with a few Turkish guns, Black Aces guns. Um, and I was skeptical to say the least. Um, he very nearly won one of our uh, Syntax Skills Gauge coins. Uh, he ran that gun extraordinarily well, uh, as well as anybody did with a stock. And seeing him use it, he obviously put in a lot of thought a lot of effort, a lot of experimentation, uh, and he figured out a way to make it work um, in for his particular niche uh, application. Yeah. And, and it, it works. So stepping from that to this, he started looking at the idea of what about using a pistol in a very compressed format, but actually being able to use the sights. So you can be very compressed right in here mm -hmm. and shoot, but not in any reasonable range. You know, mm -hmm. that's a this kind of range sort of thing. Yeah. But what if I've got a silhouette at 50 yards? I'm not going to hit it like this. No. But if we take a pistol, a low, relatively low recoiling pistol, like this one, this is a kel uh, what was it? C CP33. CP33. Competition pistol or cheek, cheek pistol. We'll go with cheek pistol. <laughs> um, but it's got, specifically, it's got a protrusion hanging off the back of the grip. Um, the other gun that Rhett's doing this with is a Steyr TMP, or whatever the semi-auto pistol. I think. Yeah, the, the semi-auto pistol version of the Steyr TMP submachine gun, which has the same form factor. So, grip in, or magazine in the grip, but it's got this protuberance hanging off the back. And show us how that's actually held, because yeah. it's rather uncommon. Next. So the way Rhett does it, and step over this way so I can get... There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Is... He has the optic mount further back. Now, Rhett uses a different optic mount than I do that's better for this purpose. I just, playing around with the concept, grabbed what I had. Uh, his gives a little more room up here. But he will grab over the top of the receiver with his support hand and then place the gun into his cheek, get his eye right behind the optic, and do kind of a reverse push-pull. So he's pulling in with this hand and pushing in with this hand, stabilizing the gun, and... Do, 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 do. And, you know, uh, it's really pretty remarkable. It the works. The accuracy and the cadence of fire you can get with it and have a thing. So his concept for this or his rationale for this is largely based not on a big open range like we have here, but in a very tight quarter like going through a small building mm -hmm. for police or security mm -hmm. uh, type of use. And, I mean, when you hold that up in a firing position thing's tiny and it's only as long as it is because it's got a suppressor on because i don't want to shoot my hand off yeah which is really more for hand protection because matt's hands are about this big uh, than it is for quieting the gun down yeah the quieting is nice but it is uh it's... but even without the can i've got you know the, the qd mount on it gives me a little extra standoff yeah uh, and that's something that red advised as well he has a muzzle device on his uh some kind of flash hider i think uh, just to keep the hand away from the path of that muzzle. Yeah. So the downside to this is that the kel CP33 is basically a piece of garbage. It is. Okay, what, what happens it, when you load the it, first round in it, any magazine? So on my particular gun, <laughs> Rhett says this doesn't happen with his, but on my gun, when you charge the, the first round, it hangs up on the feed ramp, and you have to take the mag out and charge it again and then put the mag back in. And uh, it's very ammo sensitive. You put the wrong brand in, and it just doesn't work. It likes 40 grain or heavier bullets, and it likes a little bit of oomph behind them. So I've had good luck with mini mags and Blazer 40 grain. 
Um, we have had absolutely no luck with like cheap Remington gar uh, Golden Bullet bulk pack. I think you almost said garbage bullet there, uh, which would be appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, potato, potato. So don't mistake this as a uh, uh, recommendation for the CP33 as a pistol because no. not so good. No, um, it's it's to me it's a proof of the concept of the form factor. Yeah, more than anything else. All right, but people want to see this actually used. So let's flip the camera around and uh, let's both do some shooting with it. Let's do it. Yep. See, it does that just about every time. And I got to pop the mag out, point it down. And there it goes in. And we're up. How far do you think that target is? That's close to 50 yards. Yeah, I mean, I'm ringing it like, like a dinner bell. And it's a half size silhouette. Quarter size. All right, so one of the downsides of this is I cannot do this left-handed. Uh, Rhett had some suggestions for like using my my right hand as a cover, kind of like this. I'm frankly not really confident that the kel is going to work at all that way. So I'm just going to shoot this right-handed as well. Yeah, actually chambered for me. Wow, that's right. a first. All right, you ready? Go for it. That was a hot piece of brass. I think it's really interesting. I did a little bit of tinkering with the gun, and I can't actually make hits that fast in a traditional two-handed pistol pose. Pulling it up, using the cheek as a third point of contact is a really interesting, effective way to stabilize the gun while also actually compressing the whole thing in really close. Something to be said for 30 rounds in the magazine too, huh? Yeah. All right, yeah. All right so I think that is a fascinating little concept. Uh, I, I agree. It's too bad that there isn't a better gun to do it with. Yeah, I, I think with some, some better quality control and some design choices come from other guns that have experienced similar issues, I think we could have something that's, that's really interesting, like, um, Having the ability to convert it from left to right hand ejection like your FAMAS. That would be really fantastic because there's just really no way to shoot that. Like you'd need forward or bottom eject. You can't do top eject because you're covering everything on the top of the pistol. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, my, one of my first thoughts was, oh, what about a Scorpion? But no, Scorpion's top eject bolt handle is going back and forth would be under your hands. That wouldn't work. No, I don't think that would work. Bottom eject on a pistol is gonna be really, like, the only company that would come up with that would be kel doing like the RFB of a pistol, or uh, RDB. <laughs> Bouncing it out, like, out this little spot right back Yeah, there. and of course hit my big old right hands. There. Yeah. yeah, I don't know that that's ever gonna work. No. Um, I think we're no. pretty much stuck with side eject, but if you had a pistol where you could swap it left to right, that would be really cool. I think so. Um, the the 22 high capacity is a neat version of it but we shouldn't we should be clear it's not limited to that no. the idea of having a standard you know a nine millimeter or a 40 uh, or a you know 765 french long i think would be really interesting in this platform why not you know you get some of the modern 32 caliber bullets that have been developed as defensive rounds for like uh, 32 Magnum? 32, you know, H&R Mag or 327 Federal. Yeah. Um, you get that kind of modern bullet construction in a smaller, lighter recoiling, stack a ton of them in the mag caliber, you might have something. Yeah. So, anyway, I 
I think it's a really interesting concept. I thought it was interesting enough that I wanted to uh, show it to you guys here today. So thanks to Matt for uh, bringing out his example so we could do a little bit of tinkering with it at the range. And, uh, you know, let me know what you think. And uh, if you happen to run a gun company, maybe think about designing something that meets this sort of use case. Yeah, get with Rhett and, and make something space wizardy cool. Dude, can you imagine what would happen if you took Keltec and Rhett and a quality control engineer? My God. They could. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.